Cody Rhodes did a promo. Oh, did he ever? He certainly did. There's no doubt about that, and there's no doubt it was a Cody Rhodes promo. First of all, he comes out, he's got a suit, and he's got his TNT belt, and there's a 12-foot ladder just in the ring already set up. 12 foot? I think this thing was 30 feet high. <laughs> Bro, they had a hard cam shot, and I never saw the top of the ladder. Not once on this show did I see how high that ladder was. Because the ladder just, you presume where it is, because the ladder goes like this, and you can, you know, your brain can fill in the rest of the Extrapolate ladder. Extrapolate angles. But I never yeah. saw the top of it. So it's possible the ladder was angled and then shot straight up and was 100 feet in the what air. What a horrible ladder that would be. Yeah, like one of those Bugs Bunny cartoons. But this was a tall, tall fucking ladder. And I thought, they better not be using this particular ladder next week or one of these two guys is going to get hurt. That would be bad. That would be bad. So my first thought was, even before he started talking, this whole rigmarole with the interim champion for... 10 days, whatever it is. Why do they have to bother doing an interim champion? Was this just because Cody wanted to do a ladder match and that was their way to set it up? Well, no, because they... Had, it's because of the Battle of the Belts. I mean, I, I I think they just wanted to do something different. I mean... Different can be worse. Well, yeah, but I mean, they... they. Okay, so I presume, I could be wrong, but I just presume that Sammy is going to win this ladder match. So that would tell me that the plan, for whatever reason, was that Cody was going to beat Sammy and then lose it right back to him the next week at Battle of the Belts. But he didn't. So I guess our option was, well, he could, he could if Cody's going to be gone, he can vacate the title, and the winner of Sammy and, and uh, Dustin is just the champion. And then what do you do? You just do another match anyway. But then what's what's the impetus for doing a ladder match? There is none. Or, hey, what the hell? We'll make an interim title. Sammy wins that. And then we put both belts at the top of a ladder. And and uh, the winner is the uh, unified champion. So I think that once Cody got COVID, I think they just thought of all of the different options. And clearly, I don't think this is obvious. This is the one they thought would be the best idea. But it is baffling that we got an interim champion well, the other guy is going to be out a week. Also baffling most of this promo. By the way, you remember when when uh, they did that unified title and we were going, why would you put a, make a unified championship with a guy who's only even gone a week? And I had to listen to everybody tell me, bro, we don't know how long he's going to be gone. He may be gone a month or two months. He was gone a week. Just want to get that in there. So he begins by discussing, of all things, CM Punk's pipe bomb promo. Which is now 11 years ago. Well, he had a point to this. He did. Crowds joining him out, telling him to shut the fuck up. So Punk talked about New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor of working for the Young Bucks. But he never actually did any of those things. Cody did. He fought the Monopoly. He wrestled in New Japan and Ring of Honor and fought the Young Bucks. And every one of you cheered, he says. And your pieces came, I will never turn heel because you cheered me when I needed you most. I always love it when a guy in the ring tells me he won't turn, he, he won't turn heel. He he had some great lines. You know it's amazing, Vinny. You didn't you didn't like this uh the early part of this promo, did you? I I did not. He did have some great lines in the middle and end. I, I just think it's funny because what he was doing here was uh I don't know if take credit is the right term, but you know, Punk wanted to be a revolutionary, but he was a revolutionary. Uh, Chris Jericho opened the forbidden door with New Japan, but he's arguing he actually did it first when he left and went to Ring of Honor and everywhere else. This was essentially a promo that uh, that a lot of folks would be really angry about, but as he delivered it, they all went crazy cheering him. It was actually very impressive. He had he had incredible delivery to deliver a promo like that, essentially taking credit for for multiple things that multiple people have taken credit for. Him trying to take credit for all of them. Yeah. And uh, and getting the crowd to just go absolutely hog wild for him when it started out with them actually hating him. Well, they went hog wild for him when he began to say things like, I know you're talking about the Bucks restarting the Wednesday Night Wars. He knows Red Dragon graduated hip toss class with flying colors, but I don't need to see the Bucks beat developmental again. He mentions his real life friend, Ricky Starks. I guess all those other friends are fake. Who picked a fight with Jay Lethal. I know we're in the business of renaming people like Gutter McGillibuddy or whatever. 
but you don't come in AEW and call yourself Brody unless you got huge balls. And you only want to mistake that as Nate Years when his kid shows up. But regardless, Brody King is here. He puts Brody over, Malachi Black over, all these guys. Holds up the TNT title says, we don't have secondary belts in this company, except right now we do because there's two of them. And I think it's clear what we, what we do. And he looks at the big-ass giant ladder. And he says, Tony Khan has a contract in the mail. Not the contract I wanted, he notes. <laughs> and eventually, after all he's said and done, he challenges Sammy to a ladder match for both belts. A rambling fever dream of a promo. I didn't think it was rambling at all. I thought it was very focused in everything he said. I I liked, I would say, 80% of his lines. I did not like 20% of them. Uh, maybe I'm old, but uh, why won't I turn heel? Why won't I turn heel? My real life my friend. My real life Starks, friend. Yes. Th- this, is, this is too much. If you want to talk about not the contract I wanted, that was a great line. That was a fabulous If you want to talk about graduating hip toss class, that's a great line. There were a lot of great lines in here. He, he stuffed a lot of great stuff into a... a uh, a rather short promo, quite frankly. This wasn't like a 20-minute promo. But uh, I don't need to hear about real-life friends and, you know. I feel like I realize we all know it's fake, but, like, when I watch the show, I mean, this is an old argument, but I don't watch, you know, Star Wars and, uh, you know, in the middle of the movie, the camera moves around to the other side and, you know, R2 little man jumps out of the ca- I don't want to see any of that. Yeah. Like, I want to see the fucking movie. I want to see the wrestling show. I feel like we say this a lot about Cody Rhodes promos. Like there's there's good nuggets in there, but it's all messed up and disorganized. And there's too much bad things in there as well. It seems like a pattern. I thought it was more good than bad. And I was very impressed how he got these fans to just be frothing at the mouth in the middle of this promo cheering for him. That was very impressive. Hey, girl, how was your New Year's? Oh, it was so much fun. Brooks and I put our boots on, and we did a little Texas two-step. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. Daddy, these girls are so you. Um, who are you? I'm Wendy Chu. And why are you looking at me like a ham sandwich? Wendy who? Ham sandwich? <laughs> Wendy Chu? Then it ends. Bro, that was, like, easily a thousand times better than what they did. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.